We got I'm, a show today, don't we, breath. Dr. Pat? <laughs> just, yeah, she's taking. I just, I just I gotta, took a breath. You know, I, 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 I got to caution everyone. Dr. Pat is fired up today, and for good reason. Dr. Pat, let him have it. I just took a breath. Um, okay. Today is a very special day. So, can we start with that? Let's start with that. And today's show is a live call-in show for everybody. Uh, not only is the live call-in show, 1-800-930-2819. I think Jacob's over on Facebook and you know he's gonna be able to watch what's going on over there and comments that come in. Um, what I wanna say to everybody is it is a live call-in show and we are gonna do readings, we are gonna do connections with you. We're going to be doing all of that. But it's also my phone is already ringing. It's also a really important show for a lot of reasons. One, Mark and I decided, right, Mark? Yep. Today is Thursday, August 26. And something happened August 26 in uh, uh, 1920. I believe it was, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And it's the anniversary of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote. Now, I was almost going to be a little bit cautionary during this show. And one of the things that I realized about being cautionary, and can I just tell you what, what I just did? And then you can chime in. And Rocky, I think, is here too. Rocky may want to get in on this. I don't know if Rocky's going to want to get in on this or not. Um, I've been a broken record on something. Every show where I'm talking about equal rights or I'm talking about, you know, I remind everyone that this is not something from a hundred years ago, although we are celebrating on the twenty, you know, the twentieth, you know, twentieth, uh, 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 August twenty-sixth. We are talking about the right to vote in nineteen twenty. We're talking about your mama, my mama, Rocky's mama, maybe our grandmamas. We're talking about these women that raised us, right, Mark? Yes. So whenever we talk about history or herstory, and we bring it to the current, and I work with young, young women. I work with women that are 
20s, 30, whatever. Something hit me today. Can I tell you what it is? Uh, I'm, I'm all ears, Dr. Okay. Pat. Okay. This is a day to celebrate women's right to vote. It's also a day to remember what we don't have, not just women, but I'm talking about other people. If you think that the domestic partnership, LGBTQ, whatever you want to call it, same sex, Matt, if you think for one minute that that piece of state legislation is changing the landscape of what's happening across this country now, that is not correct. It was a major effort. And today I got accused of being a broken record about one thing. <laughs> now, do you, can you even imagine me being a broken record about one thing? Not at all. <laughs> but I love people that are broken records because how many broken records helped get Medicare for all? No, we don't. Oh, sorry. We don't have that. Oh, do oh, that slipped. Oh, that's Freudian. That must be a psychic moment. But how, how many broken record people got Medicare on the books? How many broken people fought for Medicaid? How many broken people fought for this bill, this amendment? What do you think it took, Mark, from your perspective? Let's have you talk about it. Well, what do you think it took from your perspective? And by the way, in 1971, when Women's Equality Day was passed, thank you, Representative Bella Abzuk. I was there, dude. I was there. Wow. Right? 1971 and passed in 1973. Bella Abzuk. She is the queen of broken record statements. That's what happened. From your perspective, here we are today. Let's celebrate. It, it's important to realize that First of all, political change, it always lags behind social developments. And let's face it, since we're talking about Women's Equality Day, I saw a bumper sticker recently. I was driving and it said, well-behaved women seldom make history. And I, st I started laughing. And think about it. Um, Susan B. Anthony, Carrie Nation, Bella Abzug, I mean, all these women activists and activism in general, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous to think that it took until 1920 for half the population in this country to be granted the right to vote. You know, and, and for me, it's, it's I, I've always found this, this uh, sexism, I, I've never understood it. And I guess it's because I had female professors in college, in law school, I've worked with female attorneys. I've had female bosses. To me, women were just part of my world and they were always part of the decision-making process. But in the generation before me, that wasn't the case. I mean, if you look at a show like Mad Men, all right? <laughs> Mad Men, yeah, I know you're laughing. It, it was a great show because I think it very accurately depicted the sexism in the early, late 50s, early 1960s. You know, the male executives, they called them Mad Men because it was the advertising executives on Madison Avenue, in New York. All right, so the man would come in, smack a secretary in the fanny, hey, baby, get me a cup of coffee, you know? And right, first now, if you did that, you end up getting arrested. But it was this, this culture of, of treating women in second-class status. And it took, it took until the 1920s. And even to this day, there are still... We're, we're still talking about voting rights. Um, I mean, this is ridiculous, but this is also the world that we live in. So 100, yeah, 101 years ago today, the 19th Amendment, which granted uh, men, granted women the right to vote, uh, was finally passed in, or you know, enacted. Yeah. So I want to tell you the statement was made to me, and I'm so glad it was made to me because... I had a moment where I had to face myself. So the statement today that was made to me was, you sound like a broken record. You're gonna talk about this thing again, right? 
you're going to talk about, you're going to bring this thing up and you're going to talk about this, um, this legislation that legislate this, 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 this bill that hit the Congress, hit the Senate for equal pay for women a couple of months ago. Right. Right. And so they're like, do you like, you're going to talk about this again? Okay. So broken record. And so I had a moment where in that moment and in that time, I just had like a little teeny moment where I almost wasn't going to mention it because I started to think, am I a broken record? And then I turned around and I said, here we go. Mark, how many people in 1920, just give me your perspective. Per, if I sound like a broken record, those people must have sound like an entire broken stereo system. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, um, the 19th Amendment didn't happen because people mentioned it once. We want the right to vote. No. OK, so we'll sit down. You have to be <laughs> persistent, persistent. You know, I was watching uh, the history of the sitcom, uh, a CNN special, and they showed a clip. And, and when you were talking about being a broken record, OK, the Mary Tyler Moore show. When was that? The 1970s or something? And they showed a clip where Mary goes into her boss's office, Lou Grant. She said, why am I being paid $100 a week less than the man who held this position before me? And he goes, because you're a woman. OK, and, you know, you hear the laugh track. OK, so that was in the 1970s. That's, uh, you know, almost 50 years ago, I guess, when that, that particular episode aired. So, Dr. Pat, you're not the only broken record. If, if, if this was being brought up in a sitcom, and sitcoms are uh, clever ones anyway, like Mary Tyler Moore and the Norman Lear uh, programs and the ones that basically reflect society and comment upon it through humor. If that was an issue 50 years ago, why mm. is it still an issue today? And why haven't things mm. changed? I mean, I've always believed equal pay for equal work. Um, I remember I had a, um, uh, an administrative assistant and she had a cartoon taped um, next to her computer in her workstation. And it showed this woman holding all these books and files and it says, what does the work of five men, one woman? And, and it cracked me up, you know, and, but, but think about it. Um, women are half the population of the world, give birth to all of the world, and yet have been relegated to second-class status. And the only way that's ever going to change, Dr. Pat, is by being a broken record. And for people who don't know what that means, a broken record, in ye olden days, we had these things called records, and we'd put them on a record player, and if there was a scratch in it, it would keep repeating. So that's where the uh, expression broken record came. Um, I guess now it would be a loop in the computer program's flow chart. <laughs> but I, I do want to correct myself because I've been calling it something it's not. And I do want to correct myself because I think it's important. So I want to be clear for everybody. What I'm the broken record on it is the House bill that passed, which is called the Paycheck Fairness Act. I mean, can you imagine something like that not being passed by the Senate? And I just want to say, I'm not going to talk much about it. You can Google it. It was passed by the House in 415, and it was shot down by the Senate. And, you know, someone said to me that, you know, what else was hidden in that bill or what else was in that? So here's what I want to say. If you don't like the Paycheck Fairness Act, and I'm not clear what else was in the Paychecks Fairness Act, but there was a lot of things that was in there. And the bill said that this bill addresses wage discrimination on the basis of sex, which includes pregnancy, sexual orientation, gender identity, and sex characteristics. Now, am I a broken record? No, I did a poll. And before I started to mention this a couple of months ago, there weren't very, very many women even in, on my staff that knew about it. So we are here to say, 
today's show is about celebrating these women. Mark, they walked the streets. We didn't have social media. They walk with signs. Some of them were beaten to a pulp, yeah. right? Yes. Here, can I leave with this before we go to break? And then we'll go to the phone lines. Here's what I want to say. I was reminded of this last night. I have been watching a movie over a period of three days because it's not Linda's kind of movie. So I have to watch it in between. But I did finally get to watch a good chunk of it last night. It didn't do very well at the box office. Um, it, it, the movie's called Reminiscence. It just came out. Uh, it stars um, Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson uh, and Van Duy Newton. And I was captivated by it. Here's why. It was set in a time where all people had were their memories. You know, much was lost on the planet, but all they had was their memories. And it was an incredible movie. And, and what I may became aware of, Mark, from this movie is I'm afraid women in particular are going to forget and I'm talking to, I got to say it to some of you youngsters, they're going to forget 1920. They're going to forget the fight for equal rights to control our bodies. They're going to forget. And, you know, let me just talk to my friends here, my colleagues, my sisters and brothers in the LGBTQ community for a moment. If you forget what happened with men dying in the 80s, I was there in New York. If you forget the fight that it took to go up against Mayor Koch and get medical care, this is what is the concern for me. That's why I'm a broken record. That's why you do what you do, Mark, so that people can remember their connection. Yes. You know, they can remember some of the people that are connecting today on the show that you're going to connect them with. They probably were some of these people that were in the fight, right? Absolutely. So today we want to honor all those people that are fighting today. But when you call in and you connect, we want to honor those people that Mark is going to connect you with. Because I bet you money, they've been around on the planet to create some change. How about we go to break? When we come back, we go to the phones. Hi, I'm Mark Anthony, co-host of the live stream show, The Psychic and the Doc. My co-host, Dr. Pat Basili, is the founder of the Transformation Network, which produced this promotional video in honor of the 40th anniversary of the founding of IANS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. September 2nd through the 5th is the IANS 2021 online conference, featuring over 120 speakers and panelists including the top near-death experience researchers in the world. This year's theme is past reflections, present enlightenment, and future illumination. On Thursday, September 2nd, I'll be conducting a spirit communication event to connect random attendees with their loved ones in spirit. Then on Friday, September 3rd, I'm presenting my keynote talk, The NDE Zone, connected by the light from the cosmic to the subatomic and I'll be giving a sneak peek preview of my upcoming book, The Afterlife Frequency. Tickets for IAN's 2021 online conference are going fast. Get yours by visiting IANS.org. That's I-A-N-D-S.org. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and it's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. And yes, I just got a text message from someone that said to me, oh, Pat, you just should know that the issue with that vote was a filibuster issue. 
And uh, yeah, whatever the issue was, all I'm saying to people is go ahead and look up the reasons that this act was not passed. The rain reason from a number of states, the senator from Tennessee, I think the senator from Louisiana, a couple more, was because it would result in, Mark, frivolous lawsuits. Now, I'm going to end with this. Equal pay, I'm not sure how frivolous that is if you're banging it out with a really pittance of dollars. Okay, we're taking your calls, 1-800-930-2819. We're also taking your comments and questions if you go to transformationtalkradio.com. And right there, you can type in your question. Uh, And certainly, if you're on Facebook.TransformationTalkRadio, you'll be able to kind of punch in over there and see what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, I want to let us talk a little bit, if you could just fill us in. And I got a question for you, Mark, on this. Okay. Um, You've done a lot of readings, connections with people. Yes. You know, you've got multiple books. You got a new book coming up. You're participating in a conference. All of these things are happening. But the question really is, you know, I don't think I'm that far off when I say I bet some of the folks that you connected other with have been some of those people that have pounded the pavement. Absolutely. You know, um, every generation has its struggles as its turmoil. And, you know, um, when my father passed, um, as I was getting ready for his, his service and I was putting together a film. And so I was looking at all these pictures and, you know, I thought of my parents as mom and dad, you know, I thought of them as senior citizens cause that's how I knew them. And I came upon all these pictures when they were dating and they were like 20 years old. And it was like, Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I was looking at my mom. It's like, she was gorgeous. And I was looking at my dad, it's like, yeah, he was a Navy SEAL. And he, you know, I know how Navy SEALs look. And, you know, it it just occurred to me that, you know, everybody has a controversy. Everybody has a turmoil. Everybody has their great challenge. And, you know, we tend to think of of our loved ones in spirit, especially uh, the ones that that were older when they passed, they weren't, they weren't always old, okay? Your, your grandparents weren't always sitting on a porch knitting. At one time, they were in their 20s and their teens, and, and they got into all sorts of things. But they also had their problems then, too. And so a lot of the spirits that I've connected with, particularly when you start going back generations, they did face a lot of... I, I connected with... I did a reading for this woman, and I, her father came through and I said, well, he's very dark skin and I feel this plane and I feel like he's crashing. And, and there's this guy next to him wearing overalls. And she goes, oh my God. She goes, my dad was one of the Tuskegee airmen. And on a training mission, he crashed his plane into a cornfield. And the farmer was this older guy that was wearing overalls came and pulled him out of the plane. And both spirits came through. And it's like, Wow. And and what was really interesting, this was in an era of segregation and discrimination, but that farmer didn't care. He saw a U.S. airman, airman and he was going to save him. So, so, but it was fascinating when, when I connect with people from generations before who lived in a world that thankfully we can't relate to. You know, and when you're saying, Dr. Pat, you know, are they going to forget 1920 and all that? Well, historically, that's that's not good. But on another hand, isn't it great that girls today don't have to worry about the ability to vote and someday won't have to worry about equal pay for equal work? You know, we have a show that's starting. Um, it's coming up. It's, it's going to be, we have a number of new shows coming up and I can't tell you how amazing they are. One of them has three hosts with them. And um, and I'm talking to the hosts about what's going to be the mainstay of their show. What are they going to talk about? And one of the women 
who brought the other two women together, you know, talked about there's going to be a question. And I'm, I'm going to just give you what the question is, and I'm, I'm not going to use real names until the show comes out. But they said, this is about the Orion question. And I just thought, wow, this is interesting. And I said, well, tell me about this. What, who's Orion? And they said to me, Orion is my grandson. He's a African-American person of color child. And the question is, when Orion grows up, will he have to protest for his rights? And I want to ask the same question today of young girls. I want to put that on the table right now. And you could call it the Jessica question or the Caitlin question, or you could call it the Cassidy question, who I know, very young, beautiful child. I knew her when she was born. When she grows up, is she going to have to protest the streets like I did growing up, like you did growing up, and perhaps like the people that have passed, the people that have made their transition, those people that I, were in the streets when I was a teenager? That's the question we're asking on this Equality Day. Do we have the courage to stand up so that Orion, Cassidy, Mandy, these young people, these young babies, Carolyn, so that they don't have to walk the streets with signs and face hate and fight for equal pay and get rocks thrown at them and tomatoes thrown at them. So this message is for every one of you out there that are not aware of the Equal Pay Act, please get aware of it, that are not aware of what your grandchildren and, and those that have come by, your grandparents, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great-grandmother. Maybe some of you had these folks walk in the streets in 1915, 16, 17, 20, maybe 1971 and 73 with Bella Abzug. Today's level of awareness is tomorrow's future for your children. Uh, Mark, before we go to the phones to talk to Mary, um, can you let folks know what you're up to? <laughs> oh, I've got a lot going on. And uh, next week is the IONS 2021 online conference, the International Association uh, for Near-Death Studies. I will be presenting an afternoon of spirit communication on Thursday, September 2nd, and then on Friday, September 3rd, at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm giving a talk called the NDE Zone, connected by the light from the cosmic to the subatomic. And I'm one of 120 speakers. However, um, I'm also one of the keynote speakers. And if you want to find and uh, get tickets, they're still available at IANDS, I-A-N-D-S dot org. Um, on September 18th, I, um, I'm uh, doing an online event with Spiritual Awakenings International. And I'm presenting Debunking Death, the Science of Reincarnation. And that's uh, always a very popular topic with a lot of people. And my new book, The Afterlife Frequency, is coming out in October. So not just the psychic and the doc every week will be uh, talking about my book as well. But I've got a lot of other media appearances. Mm -hmm. So if people want to find out about those, sign up for my newsletter. Please visit Afterlife frequency.com so dr pat i understand that uh, the technical issues have been worked out with our caller mary yeah mary welcome you're live on the psychic and the doc she's right hello now. hi mary you're live hello? on the psychic and the doc yes, hi hi hey. pat mark can you hi. hear me yes, yes we got you hi how, how are you um i think the Good. universe is conspiring against me because i <laughs> lost his connection about three times um, today, today's topic has a lot of meaning, special meaning for me, that I went to Smith College, which is one of the Seven Sister oh. Schools. Oh, yeah. And, and in Northampton, which they oh, yeah. say is the lesbian capital of the United States. Um, <laughs> you know, I was there in the late 70s, and people like Gloria Steinem came before me, of course. Yep. Wow. And, um, 
And Mark, you said something um, before you would, you saw a bumper sticker. I used to walk around with a T-shirt that said Smith College, a century of women on top. <laughs> and then there's another another one that I had that said a tradition of women in exciting positions. So there you go. Well, I, and, Smith College was really for me when I think about the and I go back in time, the yes. courageous acts that came out of that school. We don't Absolutely. talk about them enough. We just we don't talk about no. them enough, right? Um, but I, yeah, I, we're in celebration of this day and you know, the women and men, might I say, the men and women that were carrying signs that were really fighting for something. And, and, and I think this is important. And that's why with Mark connecting today, you know, there are many people that have transitioned that were also in fights for equality in so many ways. So let's see what we can do for you. Thank yeah. you for calling back. Well, you know, I am Italian. And my great grandmother, my my grandfather's mother, was murdered in Italy because her husband had. I would talk about equality. Her husband had come to the United States for a job to make some money. He left her and the children behind, and she had an affair or fell in love. I don't know with the village priest. Her father beat her to death, and nothing was done to the priest. So, Pat, Mark, when we talk about equality, I mean, does that not blow your mind? Oh, can I just chime in for a minute? I know I'm going to get an email on about what, I, what I'm about to say. Uh -oh. I don't think I don't think <laughs> it hasn't stopped yet, Dr. You, Pat. Go for it. OK, I don't <laughs> think that that's changed in 2021. Oh, really, Pat? I, yeah. need to, I mean, think oh. about think about. Pat, she was killed by her own father's hand. I know, and but my think, grandfather think was about, left. He was an orphan. But think about what we don't hear about. But you know, I mean, honestly, what you said. What did you say? The nothing happened to the priest. Did you say that? Nothing. Nothing yeah. happened to him. And, and, and that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Me, <laughs> it does that not blow your mind? And it was such uh, a shameful thing that no one oh talked about it in our family. It was only my grandmother who told us years and years later the story because my mm -hmm. grandfather never ever said a word oh my god my heart goes out to you it was, oh i know isn't it the most horrible thing i used to think about it and cry for him to think mm -hmm. that he had seen this anyway and and on top of it all um i have four children and i raised my my youngest son is gay and he's out and proud and he makes no apologies um for who and what he is and see and that. Nor should he. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was like a mama bear when it came to school. If anyone dared use the F word, and I'm not, and I don't mean the one that we, 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 know, we know what you mean. We know the okay. what you mean. You know yeah, the one I'm talking mean. about. Yeah. And I would just go ballistic. So he, um, yeah, I'm very proud of him, though. You know, I would take him from nannies and petties with me. And uh, this one story, he would pick out polish. And one day he said, I'll take that pink polish. And I know the ladies um, were talking about him. I don't speak Vietnamese, but I knew they were giggling and whatever. So I said, Josh, are you sure you want that color? Maybe we should go with black or navy blue, you know, like a rocker. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, if they don't like it, they're not my friends anyway. I'll take the pink with glitter, please. And that's what he did. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Um, you know, oh, you're welcome. But I, I'm an ally. I adore gay people. I love gay men. I like. You know, I, I remember um, when I was practicing law, I was representing this family, and and they were real country. Okay, real. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, center of the state Floridians, and and I don't mean that mm -hmm. in any negative sense, but you know, mm -hmm. but dad talked like this, and you know, he was a redneck <laughs> to the fingertips, and the mama, she worked at this here cafe, and and um, and their son, he came, he, I, I noticed that her son would always stop and talk to my secretary, and yeah. then she came to me and she goes, Mark, we have a situation here, and I go, what? And she said, I'm just going to make up a name, uh, Pat. We'll call him Patrick. Okay. Patrick mm -hmm. is gay and he's terrified 
that his, you know, to tell his parents and he wants yeah. us to be there when he tells them. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, mm-hmm. that's usually not in our job description, but right. let's, <laughs> let's, let, I said, let's do this. Okay. So mm-hmm. we, you know, I had a conference room and, and, uh, and at the time I was also not just an attorney, but a certified mediator. So we brought in mama mm-hmm. and daddy and they, they're sitting at one table and this kid's sitting there next to He was like trembling and, and my secretary was sitting next to him holding him. And I said, you know, there's Aww. something and I wanted to set this up in an environment, you know, and uh, your son mm-hmm. has something he needs to tell you. And he goes, mom, dad, and my secretary's hugging him and I'm like getting right. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. He goes, I'm gay. And his dad yeah. goes, well, we know that. And his mother goes, oh, yeah, we were wondering when he was going to tell us. And he was like, you're not mad? They go, well, it's not like we're, you know, that's what we ordered. But that's who you are. We love you, you know. And, and it was great. And, and I was like, oh, thank God, you know, because I didn't thank know how. Thank God. You know, well, that's well, helped me more because, because, because my son, who was we, very, we very all... feminine, he came home right. from school. He was about 13. He said, Mom, I need to talk to you. I have something really important to tell you. No, he was young. He was about 11. And I said, you're gay. He said, oh, you took the surprise away. I said, Josh, do you think I'm blind? Ask me hello. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I, I, I was so happy, though, that, that I was able to be there and, and my, my, my secretary um for this young man because oh, there's a lot of kids so where it it doesn't go that well for them um know. you know and 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 yeah. dr pat you know you were in new york city at a time where if a kid said to mom or dad i'm gay or lesbian or trans or you know they got beaten and thrown onto the street and it apparently the this still does happen um and it's really fascinating that Shocking. in the 21st century we're actually still having this conversation yep. um you know I, I read scientific journals and mit put out a journal a study mm-hmm. recently about is there a gay gene and they said no but they said apparently there are multiple genetic sequences and things that have to happen on a genetic level so there's no one gay gene there's something like 32 different genetic sequences and the conclusion of the report was this is something a person is born and there's nothing they can do about it okay so i mean there's there's an old joke and i'm sure i'm going to get emails from saying this that why is it better to be black than gay because when you're black you don't have to tell your parents (laughs) you know and and so so people like your son shouldn't have to worry about telling his parents and thank god he had you as a mother thank you thank you and i want to comment too about where we are in our pop culture since we're having this conversation Mm -hmm. we've what's the expression we've come a long way baby yeah but here mary is why i love that you called in here's why i love why you called in I'm going to be a broken record again. And I got schooled by Jessica Jessica and Linda before the show. I did a poll, an informal poll of women I know uh, Mm -hmm. and some women I didn't know that I just talked to on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I talked Mm -hmm. to a lot of people throughout my day. And I just asked a simple question. I said, do you think, do you think women are covered federally for equal pay? that were right and most of them yeah, looked I at me and I, said, I say no but. well right but most of them said I'm not sure I said did you know that there was a bill that passed the congress in April oh no I said do you know what happened when it got to the senate and most of them looked at me and said wow that's got to be good news I said no it didn't pass the senate you know, it passed by one vote, but the filibuster law kicked in, needed 60 votes, so it never got through. And do you know what the percentage mm. of women that knew that? Do you have any idea? I mean, this became I know, my, but okay. I didn't know. I bet it's really and small. And I like to think I know these things. 
barely one out of 10 knew. Wow. A- and when I barely. talked to them about it a little bit more, and I said, look, you know, maybe as a, a white woman, you're thinking you're doing pretty okay. But let me just be clear about what's happening. And, you know, Mary, one of the things that I know you you got from the education you got in the environment that you're in is you can't give up the good fight. I'm not, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter you're a man or you're a woman or you're a person of color or you're part of the LGBTQAI plus community or you're, a, you're somebody that has come in from another country and you're looking for freedom um, or you're just somebody that feels like your rights are just not there. You're just mm-hmm. that person. But there's a way to do it. And that's my point. You know, when I say don't give up the good fight, I'm talking about ways that you do it that have worked in the past. Those women that walked down the street and men in 1920, they were not throwing Molokov cocktails. Mentally, I think they were, but they were not. They were not beating Mm -hmm. people up with sticks. But they came out in numbers. We're just not coming out in numbers. And certainly the pandemic has put a damper on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yep. But, you know, but your courage and your standing up and standing up in a time in our pop culture, there's a couple of great movies that have just come out about this. You know, there's, you, you know, Mark Wahlberg is in a really fascinating movie, you know, and I think it's a true story. So not only are we talking about this now, we're making movies about this now. We're talking about it in headlines now. There are organizations that are standing up for it now. And I don't think the Senator of Washington, Patty Murray, I don't think she's ready to give up that conversation. Mark? And and she shouldn't be. And, you know, we were talking on the break. It's, you know, if, if you're trying to advance something like this and you bring it up and they say no, well, that's not the end of it. You've got to be relentless about it. And it's the right thing to do. You know, we don't live in the Eisenhower era where dad came home from work and mommy was there all day baking cookies and raising the kids. We live in a world now where both parents are working and there's lots of single parents. And, you know, the the fact of the matter is women are an integral part of the workplace every bit as much as men are. And this ridiculous disparity between pay needs to go away. I mean, um, I, I just don't understand how we're still having this conversation, but we need to continue this. So, Dr. Pat, being a broken record <laughs> is a badge of honor, and yeah. you don't give up. I mean, people were talking about the Equal Rights Amendment in the 70s. We're still talking about variations on that now. We're still talking about voting rights. Yeah. Freedom is not something to be trifled with. Oh, it do you want to hear the very statistic fragile, on that one? Well, our, our freedoms are very, very fragile. They are right they now. They are not etched in stone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we saw on January 6th that there was a movement that wanted to to destroy our our separation of mm-hmm. powers and, and our, our system. And I know we we try to, to not, you know, get into those type of politics, but that was a wake-up call for the whole world, how very fragile the great experiment in democracy is. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. Pat. No, you're right on with this, but you mentioned something I just want to point out that I didn't talk about in another broken record moment. I also asked, do you think women have equal rights? No. And, <laughs> no, I, no, no, but I asked that question. Do you think there's a federal law on the books where women have equal rights? And across the board, I mean, it was like, of course we do. But you see, the key is there's not enough people in the Gloria Steinem role, like Mary. Those women were crazy people in the media. Every time you gave Bella Abzik a microphone. But I'm wondering for myself, how can I talk about it differently? 
is there something that we can do to educate both men and women? Because I don't know of a single man, Mark, that wants their daughter growing up and not having equal rights. Exactly. Don't know one. What a great show. Mark. Great show. And you know what? Next week is on, um, uh, you've got a very special show. I won't be here next week because I will be at the International Association for Near Death Studies. But the week after that, I'll be back and we'll be doing another call in show. So um, um, we're looking forward to, to me yeah. doing readings and Dr. Pat with her intuitive and street yeah. smart spiritualist. Uh, but next behavioral week, psychologist insights but next week you have a lot of readings we've got two greats from the astrology world coming in and if you don't think you want to know something about astrology and signs about where you're going from now to the end of the year please don't miss this show it's for all of us mark thank you so much thank you all for tuning us in turning us on jacob thank you for all your help the ttr team and rocky we'll see you next time Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning into the Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the dot that's every thursday 4 p.m pacific time 7 p.m eastern time right here on transformationtalkradio.com that's transformationtalkradio.com and don't forget we're also live face to face on facebook.com transformation talk radio <laughs>